Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hardscape Growth Podcast. Today, we're talking about challenges. Every business and every project faces them in our 2022 case study project that we'll be presenting as part of the Hardscaper Showcase events that will be hitting cities across the USA and Canada was no exception. Today, we're diving into the final portion of our three-part preview where we uh, had a conversation with the design and build team for that project. So we'll be talking with Tony, Brandon, Peter, and Tyler, all who were on site to build this project, about some of the challenges that we faced and the lessons that we learned along the way. If you want to get more of this content, the best way to do that is to sign up for your local Hardscaper Showcase event. You can do that directly on hardscaper.com and the shows will be on the road January, February, and March of 2022. Let's get into that conversation right now. And uh, we're going to pick up the conversation with uh, Tony from Zamco and uh, Brandon, Tyler, and Peter from Techo Block, who are all part of the team that built this year's project. Our last episode uh, that you may have heard last week, we were talking about some of the design elements and how that came together and the planning that saved us a boatload of time. Uh, this uh, episode, we're going to focus on the challenges of building in the city. Small project, super tight access, on a busy street, lots of things being delivered, lots of products, lots of different products, different suppliers, different deliveries, all kinds of uh, challenges. So for that, we're going to go to the guy that was dubbed our uh, director of logistics <laughs> on the site. Um, Brandon, what was that experience like for you up front? Because we had you originally in our plans on the site building stuff with us and very quickly we realized we needed someone directing traffic out front most of the time uh yeah it was uh well hey i'm glad it wasn't mic'd up because you wouldn't be able to use much of it but i mean besides that it was <laughs> it, it was interesting because i knew it was going to be a challenge once like you know there was some delays <clears throat> then there was at one point more product than we were expecting and and what I quickly learned was, is if you don't get the attention and kind of hold your ground with, with the traffic, you're not going to get anything done. People are just going to try and squeeze by the, AT, the you know, the 53 footer. They're going to try and get around the Lotus Stone. They're not going to give you that opportunity. So while being safe, right, I had a vest on at one point and just kind of taking control and, and hey, being, yeah, I don't know, the best of something, but making sure, A, that the drivers see you is important so you don't get smoked, right? You don't want to get hit. But then after that, thinking about what you want to get unloaded first, how you want to do it, and telling them essentially, here's what we're going to do. You're going to wait, I'm sorry, for 30 seconds, 45 seconds while we get this off. And it's not only to get the project, you know, moving forward. There's also the safety side of things, right? You know, you got guys running Moffitts. You got guys running machinery trying to unload. I was in the machine at one point, and it's easy to get kind of caught up and you want to be quick and fast and get out of everyone's way. But you're not any better if you take out a, a you know a bicycle or if you take out a little kit or something crazy or run over an animal. So it's important to take your time and, and really think about how you want to do it and then execute. And, and some people are going to be upset. You can't take that personally. You say, you know, you kind of wave, I'm sorry. But it definitely was interesting. And it had been a long time I hadn't been in that kind of environment. So it was... Uh, at first, it was a little overwhelming, I'll be completely honest, because you're out there and you're like, okay, now like I got to try and coordinate what we're going to do here. Once you get your thought process in place and this is A, this is B, this is C, you execute, you do it safely, and you take the time you need to do it. It's, it basically boils yeah. down to that. Well, yeah, I mean, I, th th this is a street that there are literally hundreds of cars driving past every day. Yep. Yeah. 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 So it, it's not and a let's joke not, here. Let's not forget that we're – in a school zone, with a school across yeah. the street, a bunch of little kids. We're right next yeah. to a police station. We're on a main boulevard. We're right next to a highway with a made with a, a major intersection. This was not just a boulevard, a main road. This was a main road with every type of obstacle that you could get. But there's so many bike riders. Thank God I was in the back and not in the front. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to. I don't think I would still. I don't think I'd be able to record this out of a prison yeah, cell but... I was in your shoes right now. <laughs> <laughs> we knew that about you going into this. So we picked the most patient, <laughs> easygoing, laid back, red bearded pirate that we could get our hands on <laughs> and put him up to the guy. <laughs> it's. 
guys, there's two things I'm known for, my patience and my stretching abilities. Aside from that, I mean, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, this is a call back to the, uh, Ooh, the uh, little reference there for fitness you. episode with Becky, where we were yes, talking sir. about the importance of stretching, which uh, I was doing every morning. I don't know about you guys, but I yeah, was sure. stretching every morning. <laughs> I was stretching for the coffee and then stretching for the donuts. I stretching for the coffee and then stretching for the donuts. <laughs> Tony's got but strong not, shoulders. Not, yeah, not, exactly. not to make a yeah, not to make a big uh, a big detour on on uh, that stuff though. But since we're on that topic, yep. uh, Tony, you do have some back issues now, and, and you're yep. not you're not an old guy. You're no. 32, 33? Uh, 33. 33, and and you you have some back issues now. So um, I think it's a it's a good segue into some of the different things that we planned on how to build this. Uh, you know, Brandy, you were talking about the machines that we were using out front. One of the yep. things that we used was a subcompact loader, which was, I yep. think, the first time for all of us using that type of machine because our access weight on the side of the house was uh, 52, 53 inches wide. Uh, at, at, yeah, and so we were using a machine that was only 51 inches wide, and the subcompact loader uh, can actually, like, lift up full pallets and has a bucket that can bring aggregates and things like that. Um, but that, that's just one example of a piece of equipment that we were using because of the type of site that we were working on. We're like, we need to figure out how to do this faster. So we researched different machines and stuff like that. Tony, yeah. you were working with the, uh, the all rounder, um, the, uh, vacuum lift, uh, mobile from, uh, yes, Pave I was. Tool. uh, you, you, <laughs> you started it without reading the instructions. I started it without, got to see. I, I did, I did the, well, I'm a dad, right? So I think that the second I had my daughter, that just, that's just how I do things now. I started without reading the instructions and that did not work in my favor. Um, but once we figured it out, um, I, I mean, I was, this was at what, like, it was the end of the day. My crew was mm -hmm. cleaning up and I'm like, no, we're going to, I said, I'm finishing this patio. I'm finishing yeah. this patio, but I want to keep them cleaning. And I was just swinging Paris 750 500s, yeah. right? Like yeah. alone with back problems, as you saw. And I was yeah. just swinging mm -hmm. those um, as far as the machine could get. And then after with the, uh, the vacuum lift, uh, was that what the, the backpack uh, vacuum. That, yeah, that we was were, uh, VacMax. Yeah, we were VacMax able to get backpack. that VacMax backpack. Wow. We were able to, to get them, you know, to that distance where the vacuum lift couldn't without re repositioning it. Because it mm -hmm. was late, we were just trying to advance. So yeah. I, I still laid half that patio completely alone. And and again, 750. In a matter hundreds. of minutes. Yeah. In a matter of minutes. Like yeah, the sun it, it was going down. We set up, it took, once we watched the YouTube video. It took longer right? to <laughs> watch the YouTube yeah. video after <laughs> turning it on than it yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I mean, we were a lot. Once we watched that video, I mean, all jokes aside, yeah. once we watched the video, we understood how everything worked, the levers, the pressure. It, it was a lot safer for us to be, okay. you know, running that machine, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and a little bit quicker too. We knew what we were doing. Exactly. So. Got to stress the importance of of being safe and, and making sure we, we, we do the research on what we're using tool wise as well. And, and using those vacuum lifters to, to build to build those two areas, um, that was a big time saver. It doesn't seem like it at first, and even you know uh, watching uh, some of your guys, Tony, who were who you know the, I mean they prefer sometimes lay, laying by hand, mm -hmm. but watching like the pace of the way we were able to pop things down. Like, there's definitely some merit to having these different pieces of equipment on site. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's like anything, right? There's uh, in certain applications, yes, and in certain applications, no. We can't say that it's always, it's, it's always going to be faster or it's always going to be better. It, it might be, you know, 80% of the time. There's still always that 20%. So I don't want, you know, there's, you always have the people that say, well, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that thing for, they're going to find that one application where it's not practical. And just yeah. debunk the whole yeah. thing. It does. It definitely merits um, a, a, a mention and and how how it can speed you up. And again, I, like I said, I was alone, right? Whereas to do that same thing, I would need at least one more person to carry those with me. Whether I'm using mm -hmm. a clamp or there's no clamp that you could pick that up by yourself. Whereas with the vacuum lift, I was able to lift that up by myself and swing it over. And again, I was swinging it over the hole for the uh, the uh, harvesting for the, system. 
Fire right? Pit. It's not like I had a smooth level terrain to go over. I was going from over the harvesting system where I had to step around and grab it from the other side. So I basically was able to suspend a, a para 750-500 in the air with one hand while I brought it over and grabbed it with the other. Given mm -hmm. all those obstacles, we still laid that in about 15 minutes. And so it took longer just, to set up the machine than to lay the pavers. Yeah. yeah. And, and just touching on the machinery, and I, I don't know if it's 100% a valid point or not, but having a telescopic boom in a tight location where you have limited access in a lot of different areas is huge. It was huge because even for that pallet, I remember trying to get you the pallet, and I couldn't get through. I was done, but you lift up, telescopic boom, we were able to drop it in a, uh, not, I won't say a perfect position, but a good enough position where you could actually get in there with that grab the piece of power, and then so on and so forth. So that, that boom was, was literally a lifesaver in that specific case. The, the telescopic booms are amazing. I mean, I, I, got, to, uh, I got to play around with it um, back on uh, the last showcase project where we used the telescopic mm -hmm. boom, and we were able to stage pay, uh, pallets uh, onto a concrete slab. Um, at that point, we were pushing, what, 12 feet about away? where the skid steer yeah. could not possibly get on that. So I think the dimension of telescopic booms is very important because they're, mm -hmm. they're, they definitely play a big part. Now, there is not a ton of manufacturers that, that, that have that yeah. option. So that's the thing to, to look out for. Yeah. Sorry, I saw it's, Brandon it's writing, that... and I heard what I said. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're at four. <laughs> but for for yeah. those of you listening, Brandon's been keeping a list of inappropriate jokes that he's uh, <laughs> restraining himself from delivering on, on a hot mic here. So he's writing them down. It's, 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 it's hurting, guys. It's hurting. Go back and think, like, oh, what did I just say? Damn. Maybe if you come to one of the shows uh, in Ontario, Brandon will be there. Maybe he'll have his list of inappropriate we'll jokes. We'll blast it up on the screen. <laughs> Here's the inappropriate jokes. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Wait for but that. But I will this say that. The podcast. Uh, yeah, to, to, to close on that topic of the telescopic uh, boom, I, I, you don't realize how practical it is until you're operating a machine that has it. Oh, yeah. And then you, you're in a tight yeah. space. The machine can't advance, but the pallet can, but the bucket can. And yeah. it doesn't seem like much, but the, even it, even if it, if it's just a four or five or six foot extension, it it makes a big difference when you're working in those tight spaces. Yeah. Big time. And <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <Damn>, thank, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, on the. Uh, what Brandon about sharpening um, his pencil now? It's dull. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I think he's that. getting a new pencil. Yeah, he's writing that one dry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what what about six. the uh, the staging of materials? Because this was this was one of the things that Tony, you and I discussed before the project. Uh, we spent a lot of time discussing, uh, trying to figure out where are we going to put the pallets of material, uh, when the aggregates show up, where are we going to be able to dump those, when we're excavating, where's that stuff going to go. Uh, where does extra stuff hang out in the meantime? This was a real challenge because we had to yeah. go through from the street, through the neighbor's yard, around his in-ground pool to make it into the site that we were building. Yeah. On that topic, what were some of the things that we thought we had figured out, but in reality we didn't? Uh, well, uh, for starters, um, the street situation seemed better than it was. Uh, I mean, we had the proper permits and all that, but at the end of the day, the permit only covers so much where we had to, uh, I don't remember we were excavating, even though we used Gator Base, we still needed to excavate regardless. There was yeah. still an excavation that had to be done. So we had to pile it in the street. So that's taking up the space for our permit. But then once the truck shows up, that truck has to be parked at a, a, an angle where you could actually load it which Brandon, mm -hmm. you weren't there at that day, but imagine putting mm -hmm. a, a 12 wheeler, you know, uh, on that or a triaxle, depending on where you're listening from on that spot at an angle and trying to load it from the street where yeah. we had all that aggregate. That was a, that was a, a big challenge. Um, I, I feel like that, that was something that we, we didn't foresee. Uh, mm -hmm. and aside from that, you know, getting the pallets to the spot where we're going to use them is fine, but we're not only using one product. And we had a very limited space where we could not keep, you know, um, you know, four different pallets. We couldn't mm -hmm. have, you're trying to 
build a patio while building a wall here, while building this, uh, putting that's borders. That's a thing, or, right? And, Such and a small site there. with all these different. That's it, Be- because you know, even if you have a crew of just two or three people, the 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 two or three or four people work. They couldn't all work on one area. It was too small of an area. Exactly. So a one, you know, kind of take your team, you split it in two. While one team's building the raised patio and building the steps, the other one can be building the uh, the lower patio, or it could be building the fire pit or the benches because it's all on the same grade. It's all on that same uh, that same gator base. So that was our plan to be as productive as possible on site. But, we but managing the staging of, of materials was a bigger challenge um, for for two reasons. One is we didn't have the space to put the pallets uh, in the yard, so it was really like, what do we need right now? And as soon as we don't need any more, get it the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. And the second thing is, what's that impact? for uh the equipment and moving the stuff around and that was in all honesty that was the thing that we underestimated the most i think um because you know we ended up having a person being brandon in this case hanging out on the side of the house and in the front of the house most of the time instead of building then had we had to do it all over again we should have budgeted for that extra time and that extra person because it left us a little shorthanded sometimes. You don't have all the manpower that you thought you had on, on the site because he's out front directing, directing traffic or swapping the pallets around. Now we're taking the fascia out, we're bringing the para in because that's all the space that we have. Yeah. So that's one of the big challenges on a, on a small site. And it was I'm constant. Curious, bro, it was right. constant. Move this out, bring it in, move it out, bring it in, move it yeah. out. And then, oh, we have to get aggregated here. Let's move this over. Then switching from forks to bucket, loading aggregate, yeah. move the pallet out of the way because you can't fit through. There was so I feel like Brandon was probably um, the busiest I think out of all of us uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> Even though we were all building nonstop, I, yeah. like I said, I'm very I'm very uh, grateful to have been in the backyard with all the craziness and the building and all this going on. Then being Brandon in the front, just constantly moving things, switching buckets, this, that, going. It was nonstop. Uh, we had to constantly move things around. And Al, you just. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, because you touched on something really quick, and it was about unloading the, the you know, the trucks and which products are you going to use first. And um, I know it's not always the case, but we took the time there to actually walk, look at all the different skids on the truck yeah. and give them an order to unload and place to, yeah, I still have to move things around and, and rejig things but at least if you can get the bulk down 80 percent down in a good order that you're not going to need it right away at least you're saving a bit of time there so taking that five to ten minutes to organize what you want off the truck first can save you some time down the road i do that on every project i'm very very strict about that Uh, my suppliers know when you show up my the delivery guys they call me and they tell they ask me okay where do you want what okay I want, you know, my raffinado caps. I'm starting with my pool coping. I want my raffinado caps up front. So start loading. And I tell them what I'm using last to what I'm using first. And if they're stacking, let's say, uh, linear where I have, I'm back, I'm going in front of pallets. They know Mm -hmm. exactly what order. And if they're going along the street, I tell them I want this zone together. I want this zone together. And I want this zone together. That way my guys don't you know, have to go through with the skid steer on the street, just staring at pallets and trying to read every single product. You're working in the backyard by the pool. This is the area for all of that material. We're in the front by the landings. It's right here. Anything you need is right here. I think pallet Mm -hmm. staging, aside from for uh, installation purposes, pallet staging just for organization, I think is just as important. And that's why I remember when the truck showed up, Brandon was like, okay, this has to go there, that has to go there, that has to go there, because I'm going to be grabbing them in that order. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And and that's something that, you know, we, we, we talk about a lot, uh, both on the show and at our events, is, is you know, if you can, you know, even if you just take like a, a Google Maps, like a satellite view of the property, and just take a screenshot of that and, and start marking like, okay, you're going to put these pallets here, these pallets here, these pallets here, and give that to your supplier. It makes it that much easier. Or if you have that and you save that picture on your phone, when you greet the driver in the street, well, you can refer to that to him. You can even text it to him. Then he has it, and you can go back. If, if you don't have the luxury like we did of having a few extra people because we're filming a video and, and it's a major production, but normally you don't have extra people kicking around that you can throw on random tasks like uh, like we did. Um, I'm curious from 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 uh, Peter's perspective, uh, or from Tyler's, or both. 
what your experience was with with that specifically the staging of materials the the accessibility bringing stuff back and forth uh, was that like something that you'd ever really experienced before yeah i think it's you know like tony said it's something that's on every job site you know we you know where where are the the pallets going and not only pallets we got other building materials like aggregates right so you know the the tight access that we had and not really much room to store anything on this project specifically we had to manage how much aggregate we had on site every day so that's what those you know pre-planning those meetings at the beginning and end of each day okay well what are we building tomorrow what's the goal and how much aggregate are we going to need and then you know made sure that i was available first thing in the morning and, and off we went we kept it in that aggregate zone right and then we had you know a, a zone for all of our cuts and a lot of communication with brandon of course i mean <laughs> i'm in the backyard he's in the front yard and we're, we're texting you know and hey listen i i, I need this and yeah, no problem and then i think communication is the biggest thing and then knowing like tony said where pallets are going where your aggregates are going and lastly tools you know, we've, we've got tools that we're working with throughout the day and, you know, maybe use, you know, X amount, X tool for a certain amount of time and then it goes off to the side. Well, this was a project where if we were done with a specific tool, we actually had to put it back in the trailer because it, there maybe wasn't room for that. So I'm not talking about a shovel or a pick or, you know, anything like that, but some of the bigger stuff like tampers and that, the generator, we had to be very, we had to communicate well and be very organized uh, or else we were tripping over each other. Uh, let's be honest. So, and yeah. <clears throat> Tony, just to, to, just to not cut you off, but jump in really quick. Tony touched on it about, you know, changing the bucket to the forks and back and forth. And that's why me and Peter would often text. Cause if I was, if I had the bucket do an aggregate for the guys running it to the backyard in the wheelbarrow and they're done. Well, I would try and get ahead of it, take the bucket off, put the forks back on yeah. and try and get ahead of the product that they were going to need. So again, not a huge, huge difference, but just little incremental time gains, you know, cut some time off the end of the project. Well, it's, it's be, the being be the proactive, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's that yeah. proactivity from, from everyone here. Everyone yeah, was absolutely. like, because we would start the day, we would have our meeting at the end of the day. What do we accomplish? What's left to do tomorrow? The yeah. next morning before we started, okay, this is what we're trying to get done today. We're hopeful that we're going to get this part before lunch, this part after lunch. Because everyone knows what we're trying to do, everyone's ready to ask that question like, hey, are you ready for that thing yet? Are you going to be ready in a few minutes? Let yep. me get that ready for you. And that, that, that saved the day at the end of the, at the, end of the whole Another job. big thing that uh, I feel like obviously any success to any team is, is communication. And yeah. although, you know, obviously when you're filming, that is downtime and there is times where uh, we have to wait for the filming to end. It actually benefited us sometimes because although, okay, you know, I'd be in the, the front with, uh, with Brandon, Tyler, Peter, my crew, uh, you know, every now and then you're going to talk about whatever, but we still did talk about the project and it is like, Hey, you know what? I had this, uh, or, um, you know, uh, so what do we do next? Okay. Well, actually the plan is we did this. Now I'm thinking over there, I'm having a little issue with that. We're going to have to do it this way. And, and you you have that forced time. You have no choice. You have that time where you have to sit and, and talk. And as, as funny as it is, but that filming time that slowed us down, I feel like gave us the time to plan throughout the day and communicate throughout the day where when we were working, we were at our full uh, capacity. We were working mm -hmm. completely uh, structured. We were planned. We, we thought of everything. And that's actually how the putting green idea came out from a bocce court because we were just in the front. And Peter's like, wouldn't it be like awesome? With a whole, I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. Okay, then Tyler and me were like, okay, what do we do? Uh, how would we do that? Well, what if we put this? And then we came up with that system, you know, during a filming break and then came back to it. And again, when you asked me what I liked about this project versus the last one, I was, is that we had that freedom where it was like it wasn't it didn't have to pass through you know this person that person it was like hey guess what we're turning it into a putting green it's like oh sick all right let's do it <laughs> and this is how we're yeah. doing it <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. but we had that time so i feel like it's important to to it taught me to take the time throughout the day to actually stop and talk to my crew not only just in the morning or at night but throughout the day you know when we stop for break uh you know i let them relax on that but while talking i bring up what we're doing what what's going on because it does uh it, it does get everybody back on the same page you know periodically throughout the day so that mm -hmm. when you do work you're at your full potential i, I found I, that's what i learned the most on this project 
it's I, I'm really happy that you said that because that's one of the things. Um, it's absolutely one of the the, the lessons that, that I've learned. Unfortunately, uh, Paver Pete couldn't be with us on on, on this project because uh, of everything going on in the world. But you know, he's been part of the showcase projects for forever and ever since the very beginning. And that was one of the things that 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 I've learned from him is is that taking that step back and looking at what's going on and anticipating those next steps and, and pulling everyone together when you need to. And, and I, I'm, I'm happy that you, you, you started to apply it yourself, Tony, where, you know, once in a while, when we stop, let's get back on the same page because you're seeing things. And so is everyone else. And that's what builds that stronger team too, because everyone's contributing. Everyone's getting that opportunity to say what they're seeing and what they think they should do next. Tyler, you were, you were a big part of that. Um, you know, thankfully w- with your experience, both as a contractor, as a designer, and as a rep helping other hardscapers uh, for the past few years, you've seen a lot of different things, uh, including how to build a rainwater harvesting system. You've, you've done that before. So while we were building that, we had a lot of troubleshooting because we had delays on our deliveries. We had an open yeah. hole that was supposed to be closed up on day right. one, and we closed it on day four, I think. So um, there was a lot of improvisation and, and looking at like, well, what are we supposed to be doing right now? Okay, what do we actually have to do? And, and you took the, the bull by the horns there. I, I'm curious like what your perspective and what your experience was not having been part of the planning, not having been part of the design, showing up on the site yeah. like, like any member of a crew normally would, and now being faced with all these different problems and, and things are not going to plan <laughs> basically yeah. from lunchtime on day yeah, one absolutely. we have to we have to rewrite the plan basically how to feel Tyler, that we just threw you into the lion's den that's what alex is saying yeah, well, <laughs> totally, like over the years right i've been in this industry 15 years now i've seen some shit go sideways a few times so uh in this scenario one of the things that i found interesting and circling back to everything you guys were just talking about is just that the evolution of the logistics too right like at one point it was such a tight space we kind of started building features in front of holes in the fence where normally we were pushing wheelbarrows before when we ran into this rainwater harvesting system situation uh it was holding us up from completing the base for part of our uh fire pit pack One of the things that was really cool is that we went, okay, uh, we can't just keep, we have other things to build. We need to utilize these accesses, but hey, we have the vac lifter back here right now. And at one point we had pulled a whole bunch of the 750 by 500. I mean, normally you don't want to move things any more than you need to, but that thing was so easy, right? On the back, you were just like taking entire pallets of 750 by 500s or 500 by 500s and then restacking them over here. No, you're utilizing this piece of equipment. You're prepping that. Now we can get this equipment out of here and we're ready for when the materials did show up for rainwater harvesting and we're able to just jump in there, get that going as fast as we can and carry on with the rest of the project because that rainwater system was essentially square in the in the way of our final access point to that yard. And I would have been taking slabs to the head uh, for the remainder of the project had we not staged and thought through that whole process, right? And I think a lot of that was just that, yeah, the communication, what can we do? (laughs) Everything around it, what can we do to keep moving? Because that was a pretty big, important part that would have been nice to have done on day one or two. Mm -hmm. We were all very good. We were all, sorry to cut you off, we were all, uh, I feel like everyone did a very good job um, stating what issues they were having. It wasn't, everyone wasn't just keeping it to themselves and trying to find solutions to themselves. And they weren't saying it out there like, hey, find me a solution for this. It was just like, well, okay, uh, you know, what's happening with that? Oh, man, I have this issue. And and everyone was very much, um, everyone was very supportive. And it was like, okay, well, you're having this problem. What if we do this? And and we all did that, and we all fed off each other. Uh, whereas I, I feel like this is probably, uh, if this wasn't just showcase, and you guys didn't work for Teco, and this was a just a company building projects, I feel like would be one of the most productive uh, <laughs> companies in the world. Uh, we, we had we had a lot of really good uh, a lot of really good um, 
how could, I don't say we had a very good structure going yeah. and, and it just happened. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of us met yeah. for the first time and it was just like, Hey, let's do this. And, and I think that we were all on the same page and again, uh, regrouping, uh, throughout yeah. the day helped a lot. It's like, you know, if I tie my boots in the morning, uh, by lunch, you know, I usually have to tie them again to get loose because I'm walking around. When you tie them now, everything's back tight. It's the same thing with your crew. Everything everything starts to stray away. When you tie it all back together, uh, everyone's back in the same page and go. And, and you're right. We were having, nice we were essentially <laughs> having uh, incremental or periodic debriefs, right? Which is another thing we talked about with that, with the final end of this project. Yeah, and I exactly. think it's a super important thing to do with your crew is like at the end of the day, Did you talk about the things that went wrong, the challenges, how to overcome them? Or did you bring solutions, right, at the end of the day? And I think, like, there was a lot of just that open communication. We still haven't had our final debrief yet, but I know uh, we'll make that happen here in the the coming weeks or months. And, and, you know, we're not building projects uh, every other week like Tony, but uh, so we got some time for the debrief there. But, I mean, really that's time to learn and we were doing that like on the fly right like it was just like okay here's what we've learned so far here's what like how can we do it better and it was just like an hourly thing and i think that was like huge when you do have such a conglomerate (laughs) of different experiences and and you got tony you got his crew we had camera people up in our grill every five minutes it was kind of like okay what are we learning here, right? It was the first experience for me. Yeah. yeah. But if... It, and it, it wasn't you, purposely you, done, so it felt more... I feel like it went smoother. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we we didn't stage the problems. Like, these <laughs> you know problems I mean? happen to us, yeah. 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 <laughs> but if you focus on, like, you know, the five people that are talking here, everyone's idea was relevant. You know, we, we all listened to each other's... Are you counting, Brian? That's awesome that you're counting the five. <laughs> But uh, no, everyone's idea was was relevant. We listened to each other. Just you know, like Tony, you mentioned you know earlier was, you know, if one of your employees brings an idea to the table, you, you listen. And if it's an okay idea, you're going to apply that on the next job or the next day or the next you know a- after lunch. That's what keeps your guys. And it did for me too. You know that that's what keeps. Hey, I- I'm involved in this project. Everyone's listening to my idea, or we've listened to Tyler or or Tony or Brandon. You know that was that's what keeps the charge going. I think it's it's really important on any crew that you're listening to everyone's idea, uh, depending on what level, obviously, the decision's being made at. But important to keep the guys encouraging them to give you feedback. Yeah. When you work as a team, and and, and yeah. it, well, when you work as a team and everyone's everyone's aligned to the same goal, the communication mm-hmm. becomes easier. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't uh, give that person the time of day, you know, okay. You might have that guy in your crew that has a million ideas and 95% of them aren't good. Like they're just bad ideas. Still entertain it because that 5%, if you disregard the 95, he's going to stop telling you. He or she is going to stop telling you. And you might miss out on that 5% that might change the entire way that you do things. So I think it's very important and empowering for your employees to listen to them because you could only know so much, you could only do so much, you could only see so much. Instead of having two, you know, one pair of eyes, it's good when you have 10, you know, or whatever many members of crew, crew members you have. Uh, so I think that that's a big part. And I was really lucky because I remember when Alex asked me, you know, when we we're talking about showcase and all that. I told him, Alex, whatever you do, I have one condition. If you're going to get me tech reps, get me contractors, <laughs> ex-contractors. <laughs> and, and he's like. And I, he put together an A team, man. He's like, I got you, I got you. The and I was like, beautiful. And I feel like it was, it really showed the experience on site and experience from different sectors too. Because we thought, like, obviously, I have experience in Montreal, right? Peter, you don't have experience in Montreal. You have experience out in, in Toronto or in the GTA. Uh, Tyler, your experience is out west. Um, you know, these are all different aggregates, different uh, climates, different things. So we've all lived different experiences. We've all uh, overcome different obstacles. When you bring that all together, you have so many different solutions to the same problem that I think that it worked really well in our favor. I mean, I don't even know what I can add to that. Like, that's exactly why we do Showcase. Well, that's what Hardscaper is. why we have Hardscaper.com. Like that, that's, that's what, what this whole is. thing is exactly that. 
is bring everyone's experience together so we can learn together. We can not make the same mistakes that, that you made or that you made or that you made. Like I don't have to make those same mistakes because we're sharing those experiences together and we can grow and build a better industry. And, you know, uh, I think I've said this at least five times so far and, and since starting this podcast, but my dad always said when I was a kid, he's like the sun, the sun shines for everyone. Like you don't have to feel like every other hardscaper out there is your competitor. They're not, there's way more business out there than you could ever do. So why not build those relationships, learn from each other, do things your way, carve out your niche and, and you can make it like. We, I don't, I, I, we're over 30 episodes. That's at least 30 different contractors from across North America that all do things their own way and it works for them and they're happy and they feel fulfilled and they feel rewarded with the businesses that they've built. And, and on the techo side, like we just love helping you guys like that. That's what makes it fun for us. Like, yeah, you end up buying more product if you do well, sure. But it's not as fulfilling as helping you evolve and grow your business to where you want to take it. And uh, I think that's, Tony, you nailed it. Like that, that's exactly why we do what we do. Well, that's that's what I've always said. Where all our conversations about Hardscaper were that. I mean, look what five minds, five people were able to solve. And, and we, we were extremely productive. Now, how many, how many members, um, subscribers are there to Hardscaper right now? Uh, in the thousands, thousands, thousands. Ma so many thousands. five people. I'm not gonna say the exact number. Yeah, but many, just thousands. many thousands yeah. in the thousands. If five yeah. people could find so many solutions to so many issues that we had on site, and we did not slow down, imagine what thousands of hardscapers could come up with if everybody mm. just gave their little bit. Which, uh, I mean, it, it's it just makes sense, and that's what I loved about this uh, this showcase specifically is that it was a hardscaper showcase, and it was about building the industry and not just building a project, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like that's very important because, as you said, it look I I have no shortage of work. You know, my, my company's been for 11 years. I've never missed a day of work, and it doesn't look like I'm going to miss one, even if I wanted to for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I I can't possibly take on any more work. So why not give back and help other contractors be successful as well? It only makes sense. It helps everybody. It puts, it instills confidence in the clients for the hardscaper, because I'm sorry, contractors have, have gotten a bad reputation over so many years. Uh, whereas now a uh, hardscaper or contractors in general are held accountable with the internet and all that. You can't mess around anymore. So if we're all working together and we're all feeding off each other and we're building a better network of hardscapers, the clients eventually will have nothing left to say. If everybody is instilling these, it, it is adopting these procedures and building things properly, it, you know, there is always going to be that percentage that's going to give a bad name. But at the end of the day, if mo the majority are doing it well, they're not going to say that, uh, you know, hard, contractors are crooks or contractors are or whatever the case is. Uh, they're going to have a confidence. And I think that that's what this is all about. And, and I really hope that people do come to heart to uh, showcase and they do watch the videos and they do listen and they do take whatever they can from it because we worked extremely hard and we did have a lot of downtime to create this content in order to help teach. We didn't have to do this, these videos in order to build this project. It was not necessary, right? Like we could have just built it and we would have been out maybe a day sooner, but we did film and we did uh, take the time and we did think of how do we show this how do we build this in a way that we could show somebody and not just build it you know because we have to get it done because we could have built it faster we thought how can we build it you know uh, productively and be able to get the content in order to teach somebody so i really hope that people uh, take take that into consideration uh when deciding if they're going to come or not and, and come because we did put a lot of work into this everybody at this uh at this this virtual table um did put a lot of work into this and i think that we all uh i'm very proud of what we put together and what we did oh, i think we should be and and all of this is going to be presented as part of our hardscaper showcase and hardscaper summit events the events are back they're live they're in person uh, across canada and the united states you can sign up on uh, hardscaper.com 
And, uh, well, I mean, Tony will definitely be at at least one of the shows attending as a, as a guest. And uh, I'll be at a bunch of them. Tyler, Peter, Brandon will all be at a bunch of these shows trying to help other hardscapers learn. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this, this little preview of, uh, of what is to come in the uh, first quarter of 2022 and what will be uh, helping hardscapers learn to help them grow their businesses. Uh, before we sign off here, uh, Tony, you just went on the most epic rant ever. For this <laughs> I do that. Time. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm very passionate. So, that's, that's all good. I mean, that's, that's why we're doing this. Um, I'll do a little turn with the, with the, the other guys here, just to just final thoughts on, on this whole experience, what it's meant to you and, and what you, uh, what you hope that other contractors might be able to take away from, uh, from participating in this experience. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, not to jump in guys, but for me, it's, you know, what I want to have contractors take away from the build that we did, um, was the tight space and the amount of features that we could keep in that space. You know, that, that for me was huge, you know, never be discouraged by, you know, a small, small area to design in or to work in for that matter. Um, keep, keep it feature rich. You know, that's what made it exciting for us to build. I mean, I know the homeowners were ecstatic by the time we left and we, I mean, we had some fun doing it too. Right. So the, the reasoning behind more features in a small area, it, it keeps it exciting. Uh, and you know, the big thing for showcase for me is that charge you get for the beginning of the season. You know, uh, you know, winter's over. We're we're getting well, maybe not in some areas, but winter is coming to an end, and uh, we're starting to you know gear up for the season. And it's that charge. You know, it's, it's that New Year's Eve. You know, we come to showcase. We get to you know kick off the season. I get fired up about it. I know a lot of contractors. I know you guys do as well. So for me, it's just that kick off to the year, the education that we provide, and. And getting to look at that that huge build that we that we do every summer or fall, so that's what really gets me excited and fired up for that season to come. And I think that's really well said, Peter. And and ultimately, like I, th- I think there's a key element there, which is there's there's that great motivating factor coming to the event right before the start of the season. It's an excellent opportunity to bring your team together. You know, don't just show up by yourself or just with your right hand person. Like bring the team together because it's a great opportunity to show them the potential that the company can have what the industry represents and i think uh, i mean and, and tony your, your guys even said it building the job uh i asked them i said why, why do they love this job why, why do they work at zamco and, and, and it's because every day they're actually creating art that's literally what chris your, your foreman said it's every day we're building art so it's fun for us to try new products. It's fun for us to build these features. It's fun for us to do things that we've never done before because every time we're creating something unique and that is such a powerful message for your crew to hear, to see why you started the business and, and inject that same passion in, in the people that you work with. It, it just makes it that much more fun to go to work every day. Exactly. So mm-hmm. well, thanks for uh, bringing that up, Peter. Yeah, for sure. I think like, I think for me with the showcase uh, project, like just this build was not only overcoming all the challenges that we overcame, certainly as we uh, explained here is a logistical gong show. I mean, school zones and all the tight access and all that side of things. But we also utilized uh, just like a lot of awesome uh, design ideas too, like as far as tapping into things, information that you can find in the spec book, we mixed and matched some project, uh, some products that I'm really excited about there that share dimensions, let's just put it that way. And, uh, and that turned out really well. Like that was just really cool. I think the fact that we minimized those cuts and, and we worked with inside a product dimension. So the product is this size. So we're not going to stick to it being 24 feet by 24 feet if it works out to be 23 foot 9 inches. That's where we're going to end. You know, like the extra 3 inches isn't going to make or break the fire pit area, let's say. Um, And I think for me, just seeing how that played out in the design aspect, I mean, we had some of our, our... our architects who who did some of the final construction drawings on site from time to time and we were saying to them like look here's you know here's some dimensions that we would have preferred to have as an example um and and it was just an overall learning experience i think not only for like you know our design support team but also like 
uh, just all of us working together in that scenario. And so for me, it was just like a great pleasure to, to take on uh, that challenge. Uh, it wasn't too far before the event, uh, the build happened that I was made aware that I was going to be a part of the project. So uh, like you stated earlier there wasn't a lot of time to you know look over review plans or anything like that um you kind of got thrown into it there and i think we made the best of it it was really fun and a pleasure working with all you guys i'm uh, i'm planning actually on putting together a, a small two-hour course on how to deal with neighbors just some like go-to discussion points and overall no, I'm just, uh no i mean it was awesome guys um yeah it was just fun to be part of it fun to be you know, working with Tony and stuff, his crew, his crew were just hyper optimistic. And, and Al, I was there when you were having that conversation. I think we all were. But when you were having that conversation with the crew and Chris and, you know, they, they make art. And, and it was fun to watch it all come together, uh, overcome the challenges. And, and I'm excited to, to see this presentation come together. And, and again, all of this is exciting. And it's also exciting to be able to start welcoming people back to our events. You know, that's always been a cornerstone or a staple, if you will, for Techo Block and, you know, we made it work, but it, it's going to be nice to really be able to welcome people back, you know, talk with them, engage and show them what we came up with. Because I think we put a lot of cool stuff together here in a very tight time frame with a lot of challenges. Uh, and, yeah, I had a blast doing it, guys. Anytime. Anytime. And just on that last point, bringing people together and to build off of what, Tony, you were saying, like, the, you know, the power of bringing more hardscapers together and sharing that knowledge and that experience. One of the things that we're adding to the Hardscape Summit, so if you're in the area of one of our Hardscape Summits, this is like a showcase plus a giant trade show. One of the things that we've added to it is a networking area. So there's a lounge area where you can meet with other contractors, sit down, grab a drink, and uh, exchange ideas, get on the same page, build your little network because uh, that's what helps you solve problems and that's what gives you that motivation because you're not alone in this we're all here with you and there are thousands of other contractors in the same position you are and we can do this together and we can we can grow and really build this industry into what we all know it can be and it's well on its way right now we have the wind in our sails so let's keep pushing and let's keep growing together um i think that's where we're going to wrap this uh this episode up um Honestly, guys, it was super fun building the project, super fun doing this, uh, this podcast with you. And uh, I hope that everyone listening uh, does join us at the shows because they are going to be the best we've ever done because we always get better because that's what we do here. We grow and that's the Hardscape Growth Show. So thank you, Tony. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Chris and all the guys from Zamco that were on site as well. Really appreciate it. And we will see you. And I just love that last message that Tony used to wrap up that whole conversation. That's really what Hardscaper is all about. That's what this podcast is about. And that's what our events are all about. So do not miss your chance to check out your nearest Hardscaper showcase. Visit hardscaper.com today to learn more and get registered. The events are totally free. We'll have dozens of vendors on site with the latest products, tools, and equipment. And most importantly, it's a great day filled with new ideas, inspiration, and education. So be sure to get your team to sign up too. Visit hardscaper.com. Seats are limited, and they're filling up pretty quickly, so don't miss your chance. And until next time, everyone, work hard and pave harder. Take care.